the WCCO. Governor Carlson is rumored to have said Cannon retiring is better than the Gophers going to the Final Four. I think one of the things I do best on radio, telling stories. Mr. Radio. They say the Iron Range breeds storytellers. One of the finest is Steve Cannon. Perhaps it's because life on the range can be as hard as the taconite dug from the ground. Cannon combined his father's stoic tales and his mother's quick wit. Out of the mines and into the military, a handsome young man with dreams of Hollywood stardom. But Cannon was something of a bad boy even from the beginning. He bounced from city to city and finally came back to Minnesota and radio. His attitude appealed to the no-nonsense crowd who didn't mind a little sarcasm served up with their hot dish. Cannon let the little guy laugh at the high and mighty, not always the most popular approach with the big brass, but then you could fill a book with tales about Cannon being fired. Until the perfect marriage when he landed a gig at WCCO Radio. I knew that, there, that this, this was the station, this is where it could be done because it was powerful. And he had a trick. Instead of getting himself in trouble, Cannon let his characters do the talking. Ma Linger, Morgan Mundane, and Backlash LaRue. And they talked for 26 years. Is my hair of television quality? But hosting one of the longest-running major market drive-time radio shows takes its toll. He joked with reporters about getting out in time. What counts more? The money or the memories? The money. <laughs> but don't let the sarcasm fool you. It's like giving up, well, it's not like giving up a child, but it's like giving up something that you cherish, because I do cherish this, this job that I've had here in this basement studio of mine and the audience out there for 26 years. 26 years of telling it like it is, signing off with his trademark, subtly sticking it to the man. But for a storyteller from the range, you know it meant so much more. I've got the memories. Mr. Radio. You come down here to keep us company. I worked for about three months. And then she, my, my girlfriend, who later became my wife, got an offer to be the um, head of the Cleveland Children's Playhouse, which was really a plum, okay? She was going to go. At the same time, I got an offer from KBUN in Bemidji, 250-watt station for $47 a week. All right. Yeah. So she said, well, that's a great deal. I said, I'm not going up there. To Bemidji? Me? A star of Mason City, Stillwater? <laughs> There's no chance. She said, you got to take the job. You've got to get back in the business. And I said, well, you should talk. You're going to Cleveland. going to be a big honcho out there. She says, I'll tell you what, if you go up to, up to Bemidji and start over again, I'll go with you. I won't go to Cleveland. That's a and great I, woman. Yeah. And I said, hey, that's cool. I'll go. So she came up to Bemidji and took a waitress job to be with me. Now, that isn't exactly being in touch with my feminine self, is it? <laughs> no. huh? She's got this great job. Well, after being married, going through the feminist revolution, having a daughter, having dealt with Ma Linger, if that happened today, right, where I had the job in Bemidji and she had the job in Cleveland and she had the better job, I'd go to Cleveland and be a waiter for her. And a house husband. And a house husband. But not in those days, babe. I thought, hey, I'm a guy. This is only right that she should give up this great job for me to go up to a 250 water for $47 a week. You went to, to KGO in San Francisco and yep. that was 63. No, that was 58. 58. Yeah. Okay. And then you came back this way. Well, I was under contract to ABC, mm -hmm. radio and television. The people that hired me got fired after I was there six months. And uh, I did the afternoon show there, just like I did here, KGO, 810, 50,000 watts, rock and rolling. Yeah, man, playing uh, Bobby Darren and Oop Shoop, stuff like that. I was having a ball. No television, though. That never came my way, mm -hmm. supposedly. So um, it looked like when that contract was over that they weren't going to re-up on me. So I was working real hard to get back down to Los Angeles, where I'd been for a while also. That's another story. Had a shot at going to work for a real good station down there. The guy just couldn't make up his mind. His name was Mortimer Hall, and he had a top station there. He was married to Ruth Roman, a movie actress Ooh, at the time. Remember yes. her? 
So anyway, I decided that I had to get out before they fired me. And I got an offer from KSTP, from Stanley Hubbard. And it was a good offer to do the morning show there. And I got in touch with the people in Hollywood. They couldn't make up their minds, so I came back. And guess what, Robin? After I was at KSTP for six weeks in the morning, I got a call from Hollywood, and they wanted me to come out there. And I, I came home. <laughs> I had a little boy then at that time, about six months old. My mother-in-law's living with us. We're living in a furnished house. My wife and I, it's the dead of winter after California. Mm -hmm. And I had a few drinks that night with the boys, and I came home, and she told me this fellow had called. And he said he wanted me to come out now six weeks later after I had moved all the way back from San Francisco. You know what I told him? You take that job and forget about it. Yeah. I'm not coming back. And about, oh, about 24 hours later, I regretted that move. In that moment of kind of despair and a few drinks, mm -hmm. I blew a chance to go back to Hollywood. But I had a good career. Yeah. I did 13 years over there on the Boulevard of Broken Hearts in the morning. Did TV, sports, commercials. Had a good time before I got fired. I have a good idea that your track record says a lot about you, Steve. But we talked to this person, and this is what they had to say about Steve Cannon at WLOL. Well, and we were in a pop music format temporarily, and neither one of us were happy campers there. And the... Uh, the, the edge of rebellion which you could hear, uh, you know, taunting management then uh, was even stronger and uh, then uh, his uh, forays with management and uh, passing it off to Morgan Mundane to absorb some of the, some of the heat or to Mollinger or to Backlash. They were all great foils for whatever was driving him.